People who have lost weight, how did you do it? Story 1. You have to make it as enjoyable as possible. I stopped attempting to go to the gym and started going on long walks while listening to audiobooks. You also have to decrease your calorie intake as you can very easily consume hundreds and hundreds of calories a small amount of time. So you should keep a rough calorie list where you track how many calories you're consuming. Story 2. Addressed my binge eating and stopped dieting. I was stuck in a cycle of binging and then dieting, exercising the next day, which only made me binge again. One day I finally had enough and threw in the towel. Started eating normally again, like how I did when I was a kid. Breakfast, lunch, dinner, snacks, even if it felt bad or wrong. Even if I'd broken down and binged again, no more restriction. Once my body got the message that there is always a reliable meal nearby, my binge eating dropped drastically and eventually went away. I was able to shed the excess weight I'd gained from binge eating and get to a healthy weight. Story 3. I'm a doctor, not your doctor, not a weight loss specialist. Anyone knowledgeable will tell you that the key to losing weight is eating less and moving more. CICO doesn't lie. However, weight loss is a deeply personal issue and no one here knows your situation or health history. It can be discouraging to have multiple valiant attempts and not get to where you want to be. I am happy you are reaching out and seeking advice from internet strangers, but they'll have a hard time figuring out what is going to be the change that works for you. I'm going to assume that your goals are to lose weight for a long-term change to your health. Therefore, anyone touting do this and drop 30 pounds in two months should be ignored. Finding what your triggers for food are and how you respond to them can be eye-opening for a lot of people. I've had patients tell me that they wish they would have just gone straight to a therapist instead of a gym to try and lose weight to try and work out their relationship issues with food. So that's my recommendation to you. Talk to a therapist or try Noom or something of that caliber. It really does start before the act of eating. It's why we decide to eat and why you chose to eat the things you do. It's crucial for long-term health to understand these things. I hope I didn't ramble too much. I wish you all the best in your weight loss journey. Know that failure isn't futile. Story 4. I didn't stop eating anything I liked. I just started eating less quantity. So the dieting part wouldn't feel bad because I was still eating food I enjoyed eating, but I would still eat less calories than I would burn because I wasn't indulging. After that, I started with exercises. I tried to make sure I would exercise every day, but that was hard. And I started on around two, three days a week at first. Eventually, the rhythm catches up to you and you start feeling bad the days you don't exercise and you start doing it every day. As it goes on, you're burning through a lot more calories than you were originally, while also consuming less. The more weight you lose, the more confident you feel that this is actually possible, and you start doing it even more. And while sure, sometimes you feel like you need to eat or drink that extra thing you wanted, controlling yourself not to do it, and then seeing the progress on the scale and the mirror is great. I sometimes still allowed myself to have some extra shit on some days, but never too many days. This meant I steadily lost weight but didn't feel like shit about the food I was eating. The beginning is always the hardest because your body is used to eating and drinking trash and you crave it, while also not being used to doing exercises and it tries not to. Doesn't take long, however, for you to get on track. Story 5 Quit Alcohol That was the first step. That time in the evening when I'd usually be cracking open a bottle of wine, go for a nice long walk instead. Upped my cardio, elliptical three times a week. Added strength training to my routine twice a week. Was mindful about what I ate. Diet per se was never my issue, but it was all the empty calories I was consuming through booze. Now I've added intermittent fasting and different cardio as I've hit a plateau and have about eight more pounds I'd like to lose. But overall, I feel and look fantastic. From a size 12 in dresses, shirts, to a size 4-6 depending on the brand cut. Lost 30 LBs overall. Story 6 gonna be honest, BC, I'm thankful for it. Even if I'm downvoted, I got an ad in like January for HERS weight loss program, and I was so overweight and constantly hungry and unmotivated to go to the gym. So I decided to try it. It's like $300 or so for five months, so I was like, fuck it. They sent me pills to take that suppress my appetite and make me not crave junk food anymore, and I've lost 60 pounds in five months. Amazing investment for me. I look amazing and feel amazing, and now that I feel better, it's easy to have motivation to go to the gym, which makes me lose weight even faster. Story 7. Stop overthinking it or trying to make it a complicated, daunting task. Move your body every day, in whatever way makes you feel good. Although a good, properly educated personal trainer is worth their weight in gold if you can afford this, focus on balanced nutrition, protein, carbs, fats, Cut back on things you know aren't helping you. 
sugar, processed, pre-made foods, etc., drink an ass load of water, and get quality sleep. If you have an off day, give yourself grace, dot, dot, dot. It doesn't mean you're starting from scratch again the next day. The all-or-nothing mentality will sewer you. Also, I'm prob gonna get heat for this, but whatever. If it has a name, it's likely not necessary. That is, keto, I gaup FYM, intermittent fasting, etc., etc. Just eat good, whole food, and make sure you're getting enough protein. If you have a big craving for something, have it. Just stay on track for the rest of the day. Story 8. My then-husband told me that he wanted a divorce and I got so depressed that I barely ate. If I did eat, it was almost exclusively au gratin potatoes with diced ham, but sometimes I had Chinese food. I dropped 30-40 LBs, and then my bestie roommate moved in and kept me in check. So I started counting calories and meal prepping and got down another 20 LBs, so 60 LBs total. I've maintained that, though I'd love to lose another 70. I'm a 5'7 woman. I started at 290 and I'm now between 225, 230. I want to be around 160 to 170 pounds. I looked great when I was there. However, I'm just learning to love the body that I have. I don't want to hate myself anymore. Story 9. Registered dietitian here who went on my own weight loss journey. I lost a lot of weight by decreasing consumption of processed foods, added sugars, and cooking not at home. I made sure to eat have a serving of fruit in the morning and half plate of colorful veggies for lunch and dinner. I watched my portions, made sure I was hitting my protein fiber targets each day. Movement was also important, so I made sure to go to the gym often while doing other things like walking, parking at the back of the store, taking stairs instead of the elevator, etc. The biggest thing was doing everything in small steps instead of make changes all at once. Story 10. Mounjaro. 73 pounds in not quite a year. Will be a year in three weeks. I do have diabetes, but with Munjaro, my blood sugar is normal. Last checkup, average glucose 91, A1C 4.8. Edited to add, I'm now off all my medications except asthma inhaler and Munjaro, and my joints don't ache so much. It's been a miracle drug for me. I've gone from morbidly obese to just obese. When I drop another 10 pounds, I'll be overweight instead of obese. 30 pounds after that, I will be normal weight. I've dieted for the last 30 years. High weight, 265. I've lost as much as 73 pounds before with diet and exercise, but struggled mightily, and the minute I let my guard down or eased up, I would start gaining again. Dieting and trying to lose weight was a constant struggle that consumed so much of my time and attention, only to gain it all back and add more. Munjaro has made it effortless. I'm simply not hungry all the time, and when I eat, I feel full very quickly and am easily able to stop eating. Story 11. A bit over a month ago, I started taking a GLP-1, first Zepbound and now Wegovy. I was, am obese, my BP was high, and my A1C was on its way towards a diabetes diagnosis. In addition, I have inflammation throughout my body and the blood work to prove it, and arthritis in my knees. I was taking meds for the body pain and arthritis that would eventually destroy my kidneys and liver. What most people don't realize is that obesity is a medical condition and typically has very little to do with eating too many donuts and not exercising. I decided I could take a GLP-1 and use it to help me, or I could have a stroke, heart attack, and or diabetes in the next 5, 10 years and lose my independence within another 15 years. Within a couple of weeks of starting the meds, I noticed it was easier to move my body, so I started walking four days out of five. Now I'm even jogging a bit. I've lost weight, but I've also dropped a clothing size. My diet has improved, but the lack of sugar cravings and feeling fuller quicker and longer have helped significantly. My body no longer aches, so I'm moving more frequently and I've increased weight training. I have my blood work next month and I'm looking forward to seeing the changes there too. Probably not the eat more salads and lift weights that most people think they want to hear. The GLP-1 meds are one tool among several that I'm using. And for me, they've already been life-changing. Story 12, I got dumped and suddenly I didn't want to eat. I threw up most of what I did. That lasted four months and cost me my gallbladder. But at the end of that four months, I was down 60 pounds, so I decided to continue my progress with keto. And it worked but ultimately I gained that weight back. Story 13. I lost 220 pounds with RNY gastric bypass. I also prioritize protein, eat mostly whole foods, and I exercise a lot. I think it's kind of a myth that bypass will do all the work for you. I've seen results all over the map. The impact of that surgery only lasts so long before your stomach slowly stretches out again. 
So I added Wigovi recently to lose some weight after I'd gained while experiencing some other health issues despite my best efforts. Long-term, sustained weight loss is really hard. Story 14, I found an exercise I actually enjoy doing. I will never lose weight from running because I hate running. But I go to BJJ and I'll train for two hours and be absolutely exhausted with a smile on my face. Started losing a little weight and I decided to make little tweaks to my diet. No more soda, only ordering food on Friday. And I'm down 75 LBs and I feel like I didn't work at all to do it. The story. 15. Once upon a time, before I started eating my stress again and have access to the kitchen again after a period of homelessness, I was living in my car, using only the tiny George Foreman I had to cook with and preparing meals based off of Dollar Tree findings. From what I understand, you cannot get a decent piece of meat there anymore, not on the real, real cheap anyway. I did a lot of hacky sacking, and my fiancé and I were doing day labor pretty well. Also, I was climbing at Paco Sanchez Park nearly every chance I got. Free workout? Yay! Lost like 60 pounds in a total of four months, I think it was. But there were a lot of sweaty nights. Sleeping in the sauna that was our car without air conditioning until my spirit fell for the night. Usually I had to turn it on briefly to break the humidity in the car at least once in summer. Story 16. Eight months of eating disorder treatment, CBTE, trying to really focus on whether or not I'm hungry, and when I am, when I've had enough, no longer classifying foods as good or bad, eliminating that value system a lot of us were raised believing, ultimately eating smaller portions and getting my blood sugar under control. Down 74 pounds. Not much more to go, but neither do I focus on numbers anymore. I keep going because I feel better, not because of any particular goal. Story 17. Everyone knows that better diet and exercise will result in looking healthier. But finding a successful strategy that you will actually follow long term is the hard part. For me, counting calories was too much effort. So instead, I made hard rules about categories of foods I would never eat outside of very special occasions. Weddings, funerals, family vacations, desserts, cookies, ice cream, brownies, etc., potato chips and similar snacks, fast food and sugar water, soda, sweetened tea, etc. The thing about unbendable rules is that it actually does not take much motivation to follow them, any more than it doesn't take motivation to not steal an expensive sports car you walk by on the road. You might like to have the sports car, but it's the law that you can't. If it is a personal law that you do not eat certain calorie-dense foods, then you won't eat them, so you'll costume fewer calories and you will lose weight. If you allow yourself to cheat, then every time you drive by McDonald's, you'll be tempted. And it will take effort every time to deny yourself, and eventually you lose, and you'll start losing more and more often until you fully give up. As for exercise, find something that you enjoy doing. Story 18. Couple things. Finding something fun and active to do for regular exercise. For me, it was boxing, but it doesn't even have to be something intense. Long walks with some music, social dancing, hiking, and biking groups. Anything that gets you to move and doesn't feel like a big chore. Drinking at least a half gallon of water a day. I also flavor my water with electrolyte powder. A lot of times what we think is hunger is really dehydration, and drinking more water helps with portion control, unnecessary snacking, etc. Looking up simple meal prep recipes that I think I would like, and blocking off an hour or so of my Sunday to cook enough for the entire week. This makes it so I have meals ready to go, and I'm not tempted to eat something unhealthy if I'm too lazy to cook making small changes from what I'm already doing, rather than big changes. It's unrealistic to think I can go from eating fried foods and sugar every day to chicken kale salad and be able to sustain that for a long period of time. Same with activity. Can't go from being a couch potato to doing an intense workout regimen every day and sustain that as well. Small, sustainable changes that build up over a period of time is key to not only losing the weight, but keeping it off. Story 19. Lost 40 pounds over the past year the best way possible, IMO, very slowly. Recommendations. Start drinking only water. You'd be surprised how many calories, sugar, etc. is in things like coffee, soda, energy drinks, whatever. It's very hard at first. I used Mio as a flavor supplement for a while, but eventually I got a Brita filter, and I can just casually drink water all day. It's very, very rare that I drink something that isn't water. Something else you can try is just calorie counting and slowly work on a budget. Exercise is important, but I'd wager calorie intake is the vast majority of the weight loss battle. What you eat doesn't matter as much as how much you eat. Sure, if you limit yourself to one, 5K calories a day, 
It shouldn't be all cake and iced cream, but as long as your BMR is burning more than what you eat in a day, you'll eventually lose weight. It gets harder the more you lose weight because you need to cut more calories to continue losing weight since your BMR will be consuming less. I went from 180 to 140 as a 5 at 6 man in around a year, and it's much harder to lose weight now, but I'm still making progress. Making sure your weight loss is slow and steady also helps prevent things like stretch marks and loose skin. And overall, again, IMO, I'm no doctor. It's just way healthier for your body to small incremental changes rather than just one huge diet and activity change. Story 20. I found that I just had to change my habits when I hit 40 and suddenly had a big fat belly hanging over my belt. I panicked. Had to change my habits, like for instance, no more polishing off a pint of ice cream before bed. Stopped buying chips and cookies and cakes and all other crap food and replaced them with fruits and nuts and berries, etc. I bought a bike and rode it all over the city and beyond. The belly melted away in about a year and is still flat. It's a lot easier to keep the weight off than it is to take it off. TLDR. Eat less crap. Get more exercise. Unsurprisingly. Story 21 Liraglutide. Poor man's ozempic, basically. Not only am I mildly crippled and in constant pain from an injury many years ago, but ever since I was pregnant with my three-year-old, I've had bouts of strong, unrelenting hunger. A painful hunger that was only sated long, long after I've eaten my fill. After over a year of testing and other methods of treatment, I caved and asked my doc for Ozempic. She recommended Lyraglutide, Victoza. I no longer feel the painful, gnawing hunger. I'm able to resist over-snacking, and my snacks last so much longer. I can finally eat when I should eat, in the amount I need. No longer am I spending hundreds of dollars every month on delivery. The hunger pain is gone. I lost 20 pounds in two months. I'm able to move a bit easier, and it feels like some of the pressure in my bad knee has reduced. Another couple of months like this, and I might even be able to use the exercise bike for longer than 15 minutes. Or maybe even walk for over 30 minutes without needing to rest. I still don't think I'll ever run again. But maybe I could speed walk? I'm so excited. Story 22. Did lose a lot at one point. Basically, most days of the week, lunch was a bowl of leafy greens, cucumber, tomato, and some feta cheese, Greek yogurt, and sometimes a piece of cheese. Protein bar, then gym later the day. At home, I would have a nice one W of protein like chicken or salmon, a lot of steamed veggies like cauliflower and broccoli. It was okay to have additional fruit when I wanted a snack and additional protein like eggs. But basically, food like this most days of the week. I would usually go out at least once a week and have food in a group setting and be less restrictive like pizza was fine, but it was like once a week or every two. Then I basically went to the gym around five times a week. Most of the time, I went immediately after work. No stops in the middle and built that habit. Did this for a while. Basically wasting the same food mostly every day and doing a lot of physical activity. I think going to the gym less would be fine if you just go for decent walks in some of those days. Some of the gym days was I'm just going to do like 45 minutes to an hour of light to medium cardio. Story 23. Cut out snacking in the evenings and used the fit foods for lunch. It was a good way for me to be mindful of calories and still feel full and eat healthy food. I still got my takeaway on a Friday night and didn't deprive myself of a nice treat most days too. I lost over two stones so far. I also introduced walking, jogging. I done this not to lose weight, but to feel healthier and show my body some care and respect. The weight loss was just a byproduct. Story 24. It's extremely simple to do, but people are misguided. Don't try to run it off and sweat to death. That's barely doing anything for you. Simply eat at a deficit. 1,500 to 1,700 calories a day is a good goal and you can shed weight fast. You'll learn quick what's healthy and what isn't. Because in order to hit a 1,500 goal and feel full all day, you have to be critical to your food choices. Because that one fast food meal you eat in one sitting can easily become your entire daily goal. Chicken and fish, veggies and fruits, lots of water and black coffee. The most I've dropped at once is 10 pounds in 20 days by sticking to a deficit and lifting weights. If you want quick results to help motivate you cut out dairy, juice, and sugar, you'll see results within one, two weeks of keeping those out of your system. Next, you can set a strict eating window. Nothing before 8.30 a.m. and nothing after 6.30 p.m. The later in the day you digest, the worse your body is at breaking it down, so start with a heavy meal and trickle that down by having your dinner be lighter than your breakfast. Most people assume you will wake up hungry, but it's the opposite. A large meal at night will have you starving in the morning.